or square meter, square kilometer or square inch. Now let me give you an example. Can you see this rectangle? The area of it will be the number of squares present in it. So let's count them. There are total 18 squares in the rectangle. So the area will be 18 square units. Let me give you another example. Now this is even more complicated. What's the solution? It's really easy. We just have to count the number of squares in it. Which are 12. So the area will be 12 square units. Another way of measuring the area of a shape is to use the formula. To measure a rectangle, we have to multiply the length and the breadth. We have the same example as we had in the previous one. So the answer is same, 18 square unit. Now let us use this concept and solve the sister's quarrel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. See, this area of my table is 8 square unit. See sister, it's quite large. I told you 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. The area of my table is 16 square unit. I'm so thankful to the concept of area. It helped us settle our confusion. I will send this table to Mr. Sharma as soon as possible. I hope you are happy. Love you. Bye. Hello everyone. I am Anand Jaksana from Mount Camel School. Today I will tell you the importance of mathematics in our day to day situation. As you can see, there is a big garden behind me which is not very well managed. If I ask you to grasp this area, do you know how much it will cost or how do we calculate it? With some mathematical calculations, we can do that very easily. Let's find out. So, here we take the miniature form of the garden of length 40 meter and breadth 30 meter. There are 5 flower beds dug in it, each of 8 meter side. To find the cost of grassing at the rate of rupees 10 per meter square, we need to know the area of this remaining part. And for that, we have to subtract the area of all flower beds from the area of garden. So, the area of garden is 40 into 30, which is length into breadth, and we get 1200 meters square and the area of all flower beds is 8 into 8 into 5 we have to multiply it by 5 because there are 5 flower beds in the garden and we get 320 meters square now by subtracting 320 from 1200 we get the area of the remaining part as 818 meters square. Now we have to multiply it by 10 because rupees 10 is the cost of per square meter. By multiplying them, we get as rupees 8800, which is the cost of grassy. Thank you. Good morning, my dear teachers and my fellow friends. So I am the pizza chef and I baked the pizza today. But I'm very poor in math and I don't know how to cut the slices into equal sides. Hmm, what should I do today? Let me call up my niece Julia. She's very good in math. She will surely help me. Hello, Julia. How are you? Hi, uncle. I'm good. What about you? Yeah, I'm great too. Julia, I baked the pizza today, but as you know, I'm very poor in math, so I don't know how to cut them in equal sides. Can you help me out? Yes, Uncle, sure. I'll come to you in 10 minutes. Oh, wow. 
Thank you, Julia. I will be waiting for you. Until I'm here to solve your problem. I'll send you a method with which you can cut your slices of pizzas into equal parts. So, Uncle, this is a pizza. And I'll find the radius of it. So, first, we'll write the circumference. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r. 62.85 centimeters. That is equal to 2 into 3.14 into r. So now I have taken 2 into 3.14 to our left side, which will get divided to 62.85 by 2. So our answer is 31.42. Now we have removed the points of these two numbers and now we will divide and multiply them by 100. So now these two hundreds we get cancelled by themselves. Oh, wow Julia, you are so good at it. Thank you so much for helping me. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sanskriti Chamoni and in this video we will explore by rotating two dimensional figures in a line to produce three dimensional shapes. You may wonder how is that possible? Come let's explore. Here I have two dimensional figures. First we have a rectangle. Let's rotate it and see what we get. Did that look familiar to you? Yes, you are right. It was a cylinder. Now, the next one I got here is a triangle. Let's rotate it and see. What figure are we getting? Yes, you are right again. It is a cone. Now, here comes the circle. Can anyone guess? Okay. Before that, let's rotate. Wow, we get a beautiful sphere. Now, you may have a question. Where can I see this in real life? Come, let me show you. Look at this image. This is a real life example of rotating a rectangle to get a cylinder. In this image, the girl is pushing the door which is of rectangular shape and gives us a cylinder while being rotated. Isn't that amazing? Look for more like this when you go out. So that is all for today. See you with another interesting video. Bye. Hello, my name is Rudul Lal and recently I have learned about 3D shapes. Let us experience this in real life situations. There is always a question in my mind. Why do these milk and oil tankers are always cylindrical in shape? Well, I have done some research and here is what I found. We all know that all the cubal shapes have corners and liquid exerts pressure on corners. So if the tankers are cu cubical, the liquid will exert pressure on those corners and which can cause a leakage. But if they are cylindrical, there will be no pressure, thus no leakage because cylinders have sur circular surface. Here is a comparison between the hoop stress of a rectangle and a cylinder. Another interesting fact that I found out that these tankers have hollow plates installed inside them at regular intervals to reduce the horizontal force of the liquid. This prevents the damage of both the tankers and the liquid. Here you can see the horizontal force of the liquid with the ho hollow plates and one without the hollow plates. Let me ask you a question. If I have these three glasses, a valid is stable in the first glass, a box in the second glass and a paper clip in the third glass and I fill them with water. What do you think? Which glass would have the highest amount of water? Yes, you're right, the third glass. But why? This is because the paper clip is very small. 
and hence it occupies less space in this glass due to which this glass has the highest amount of water. So now you see that I have taken out all the objects from all the three glasses and we see that the third glass has the highest amount of water. This defines our answer. Now let's solve this interesting riddle. If we have two teapots A and B, what do you think? Which of these teapots would contain more tea? Take some time to think. I am thinking that the answer to this problem is teapot B. Of course, because its height is longer. But you are wrong. Why? Because the spout of teapot B is lower than that of teapot A. So this clearly tells us that teapot A will hold more. See that mathematics is not just about applying formulas but also logic. Applying logic in questions like these would help us to solve them way better. Hello and welcome to my ice cream shop. How can I help you ma'am? I am looking for some big boxes of ice cream. Well, then it's your lucky day today because we have two huge offers going on. One is that you can buy three cylindrical boxes of ice cream and you will get one cone free. And the second offer is you will buy three spherical boxes of ice cream and get a cone free. And the prices of both these offers are the same. So you can take your time and choose which one you want. If I consider the first case, three cylinders and one cone free, we know that the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. That means one cylinder can fit three cones, which means three cylinders will fit nine cones plus one cone that was free. So the first offer is giving me ten cones. Now let's see the second offer. In the second offer, there are three spherical boxes and a cone. So one sphere can fit two cones, which means three spheres will fit six cones plus one cone that was free. The second offer is giving me seven cones. Have you chosen yet, ma'am? Yes, I will go for the first offer that is three cylinders and a cone free with it. These three objects have the exact same height and the exact same radius. So let us compare the volumes of these three objects. You know the volume of a cylinder which is pi r square h. Let us check for the volume of a cone. You just saw that the cone took exactly three rounds to fill up the cylinder completely. This means that the cone is 1 by 3 the volume of a cylinder. So the formula for volume of cone will be 1 by 3 pi r square h. Now let us check for spherical and cylindrical volumes. You can see that the sphere could fill up exactly two third of the cylinder. This means that the volume of sphere is 2 by 3 the volume of the cylinder. Now while writing the formula for the volume of sphere, we do some little bit of changes. Now we can take D which is the diameter instead of H which is the height. So you know that diameter is the double of radius which means we can write the height as 2R. Now let's insert this 2R into the formula. We can see that this gives us 2 by 3 into pi r square into 2r. Hence, the formula for the volume of the sphere will be 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now let us compare the volumes of these three figures. This is the volume of a cone, this is the volume of a sphere and this is the volume of a cylinder. When we compare these three, we get the ratio such as 1 is to 2 is to 3 which means that the cylinder has the highest volume.
morning and welcome to the online commerce exhibition. We present a small bouquet of videos which showcases the talent and creativity of MCS Ananiketan on e-commerce encyclopedia. Watch it and enjoy. Hi Kushi, how are you? It's been a long time since we catched up. How is everything? Nothing much, Mahek. I can't even tell you how burdened I am with my work. I obviously cannot step out because of the situation outside and I am out of stationery. My teachers are worried that I might lag behind in my studies. Oh Khushi, you don't need to worry anymore. I have got the perfect solution for your problem. Just open the Booksy app in your mobile phone and order whatever stationery or books you require and it will be at your doorstep with a single click via a total contactless delivery with GPay or Paytm. Thank you so much, Mehek, for your help. I will order right away. Hi, Naina. How are you? Priya, can't even tell how bad I'm stuck right now. I don't know how I got this weird disease or allergy. And due to the COVID condition nowadays, I'm afraid to step out of my house and go to the doctors to further check up. Oh, my poor friend. Had you contacted me earlier, you would have already had started with your medications. Well, now, I'm here to help you and book your appointment with the best doctors in the dermatologist field. And on a video call, you can get your problem verified sitting at your home. They will suggest you the best possible medicine. And you can even pay them by online through e-banking. Thank you so much, Ria. You're an absolute savior. E-commerce refers to the commercial transactions conducted electronically. Now, we present you the videos to throw some light on e-commerce and different aspects of it related to our lives as consumers and producers. Shalini wants to start a bakery business. She has major concerns and numerous questions about the functioning of marketplaces and e-commerce. Well, the answers to her questions are quite simple. All she needs to do is opt for the right marketplace business model that coordinates with the mission, vision and the business plan. First, the commission model. Now this is the most popular business model among the modern marketplaces. It involves charging commission from every transaction. The biggest advantage of this model is that it does not charge the providers for before they get a value from the marketplace. Due to this reason, the model is considered to be the most lucrative for providers wherein businesses use commissions as the main model for business. Second, the membership model. This model is also known as the subscription model, which implies a revenue model, wherein some or all the users of the marketplace are charged a recurring fee for accessing the marketplace. Unlike the commission model, this model actually throws some reliable insights on the revenue generated. The owner of the marketplace gets his money from the registered users at a regular interval. The consumers also benefit from the model by finding unique experiences as well as saving costs. Third, the listing fee model. In the listing fee model, instead of charging the users for signing, the users have to pay for listing goods and services. The payment option in such models is quite transparent as the, as the marketplace defines its own set of rules for multiple products. All users can get access to the same information and have to pay the same amount for all the goods and services offered. The most effective benefit of this model is that as the number of the listing increases, the admin of the marketplace earns more and more. In conclusion, when it comes to business models for marketplaces, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. When designing your marketplace, you need to keep in mind your industry, your competitors, the size of your marketplace, the life cycle of your marketplace, the obstacles in your target market, and the list goes on. We would recommend you to start with the basic revenue generation models and then later on you can switch on to the advanced models. Data science is the field of study that combines domain expertise, programming skills, and knowledge of mathematics and statistics to extract meaningful insights from data. The output of this data may be used to understand consumer behavior, analysts and business users that can translate it into tangible business value. In the field of business, there is a saying that profits are the reward of risk taking. When you decide to start a business, it is because you agreed to take that risk. And that is why we would like to enlighten you with some of the risks involved in e-commerce field and how is the best way you could overcome them. The first, maintaining cash flow. As soon as you start implementing your idea of creating a web store for your business, you have to start investing. 
After a few days, you will have lots of assets like your web store, inventory, employees, etc. But still, you need the cash flow to maintain the regular expenses of your business. As a startup business, you already have a very small budget to maintain the back end, front end, and diverse business activities. But in such a situation, your business can fall into a situation of crisis. You must keep the concept of cash flow in mind and prepare a suitable strategy to maintain it. Second, managing your inventory. Why is inventory management so important? When your e-commerce is live in the market and you are managing your e-commerce business solely on your own, the products of a specific category won't sell. However, you need to keep their check life in your mind and keep them well packed. The fast moving products may must be ordered timely so you won't end up overselling the products. Creating your store with Builder Flyer will help you to overcome the hindrance by updating your inventory on the websites very easily. Third, product mapping. To those of you unaware of product mapping, let me tell you that the concept of product mapping involves copying your product details and images to sell them on one site. If you're already selling on existing e-commerce sites like Amazon, eBay, you would have surely come across the issues of mapping. It is a great challenge for you to maintain the uniqueness of your store and keep checking the chances of mapping and content plagiarism. Since you're a very small business and recently launched, there are higher chances of other businesses playing with your content at your site. People may be employed with the sole purpose of checking plagiarism. Last but not the least, protection against online frauds. We are well aware of many instances when the data of users was leaked by the hackers. In the online business, the database of your store will be at risk. If you will not install security patches like SSL certification, the payment getaway compliant with PCI DSS, etc. The risk can be data errors, credit card frauds and hacking will always be at bay. Your concern is not only set for your data, but also for the customers placing order on your store using the credit or debit card details. The risk of losing such crucial data to hackers can be disastrous. That is why you need to be extra cautious by adding more security patches to your store to make it safe against digital frauds. Liability insurance is a policy that protects a business from financial loss provided you are accountable for property damage, personal injury, business operations, employees and advertising injury. The policy covers non-professional inattentive acts. For instance, if a consumer is facing any issues from your business while they visit you, or if your employee causes substantial damage to the consumer while servicing, or if a consumer files a class action lawsuit against your business alleging you for providing misleading information, you would need to pay the charges for the concerned matter. In the market over the years, E-commerce has curbed the market and shaped businesses from different perspectives. The online marketplace's culture is showing steady growth for digital businesses in the market. The logistic industry also grew with e-commerce, thus offering job opportunities to the individual in delivery sector. There is no barrier to jump on the bandwagon of an e-commerce business. You can start your journey from anywhere and at any time. For now, the global pandemic COVID-19's outbreak has already devastated economy a lot. The e-commerce businesses are also witnessing the downside impact of the same because of the lockdown. But the government is deploying e-commerce for door-to-door -door delivery of the products of basic utilities. The online marketplaces are also offering the delivery of products in priority like packaged food, grocery, hygiene, healthcare, personal safety, household staples, etc. When it's a case of an emergency, e-commerce and an online delivery system are helping its best to take the condition in control. From launching a hobby business to create a venture, e-commerce can do a lot more than your expectations. If you are yet to create your store, we believe that it's the best time to stay at home and learn to shape your online. It is no doubt that over the most recent few years, e-commerce has been a rapidly growing trend. It has given a new measurement to a client. The e-commerce organizations are endeavoring and going up against one another, thus benefiting our consumers. The business model likewise continues to create different components identified with e-commerce for a general upliftment in the business. Personalization of e-commerce services 
is already in practice. Therefore, if you have not started utilizing its benefits yet, you still have got time. With more advanced technologies, the horizons are broadening every rising day. Personalization is gradually becoming ubiquitous. Only if you start now will you be able to deliver valuable services to your consumers and your businesses. Thank you. Good morning respected principal, vice principal, teachers, parents and my dear friends. We welcome you all to the Val Education exhibition. Our theme for this year's exhibition is hope. In every season of life, whether we are celebrating or mourning, wrestling or rejoicing, questioning or trusting, we can hold fast to hope. Hoping does not mean doing nothing, and hoping is definitely not dreaming. It is not spinning an illusion or fantasy to protect us from our boredom or our pain. It means a confident, alert expectation that God will do what He said He will do. Let's see an action song prepared by our junior class friends on the song, Your Power Will Pull Us Through. darkness we look for answers and find none so we search we work we numb the hurt and wait for answers to come but they don't because the world is not as it should be 
creation groans outwardly, while we grieve alone, and the world keeps spinning, and prayers seem unanswered. Yet, in the stillness, we aren't alone. Faint and lovely, a voice declares that we are loved, and that goodness does exist. So we hope for what is unseen, ignoring all the voices, except one, one who adores us, one who created us. Let's hear the testimony of Johnny Lieber and how he found hope through our Creator Jesus. I was laughing at people, but I was far away from me. I am Johnny Lieber, my real name is John Rao. मैं आंध्र प्रदेश से हूँ मेरे माता पिता बहुत पहले मुंबई आ चुके थे किंग सर्कल के स्लम्स में मैं रहता था बारिश के दिनों में घर में पानी भर जाता था घुटने तक पानी आ जाता था तो छोटे से कटोरे में पानी को पकड़ने यूँ यूँ पकड़ने की कोशिश करता था ऐसे कभी ऐसे कभी ऐसे कैसे 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 तो इन्हीं हरकतों से कॉमेडी डांस मेरे अंदर से निकला बाहर और मुझे बचपन से ही लोगों की नकल करना लोगों की कॉपी करना ये इसकी आदत थी लोग बड़ा एंजॉय करते थे तो सत्रह साल का जब मैं हुआ तो स्टेज पर स्टैंड अप करना शुरू कर दिया मिमिक्री के प्रोग्राम्स करने शुरू कर दिए एक्टरों की आवाज़ें निकालना ये सारी बातें थी फिर जब मैं अट्ठारह साल का हुआ मेरे पिताजी की यहाँ नौकरी पर लग गया मेरे पिताजी हिंदुस्तान लीवर में काम करते थे अब हिंदुस्तान लीवर में मैं काम करने लगा छः साल वहाँ नौकरी की तो वहाँ भी मैं प्रोग्राम्स वगैरह करता था तो वहाँ से मुझे लीवर नाम मिल गया तो जॉन राव से मैं जॉनी लीवर हो गया फिल्मों में मुझे जो ब्रेक मिला है वो 1980 में मैं कल्याण जी भाई के साथ आ, उनके यहाँ बैठा हुआ था कोई चेन्नई से प्रोड्यूसर आए थे तो बोले कोई छोटा सा कॉमेडियन चाहिए था दो चार दिन का काम है तो कल्याण जी भाई ने कहा कि यहाँ बैठा हुआ इसको ले जाओ मैं शोज़ के लिए एस टी बसों में सफ़र करता था थर्ड क्लास डिब्बे में मैं सफ़र करता था विदाउट रिजर्वेशन अब उसके बाद जब आप फ्लाइट में उड़ने लगते हैं तो ज़मीन आसमान का फ़र्क हो जाता है जो हम तकलीफ़ों से उठे थे अब अचानक आपको अच्छी चीज़ें मिल जाती हैं तो आपको उसकी आदत पड़ जाती है अब पिछली ज़िंदगी आप भूल जाते हैं यहाँ से हम अमेरिका जब मुझे जाना होता था तो सब डायरेक्ट फ्लाइट नहीं होती थी वाया लंदन जाना पड़ता था तो फोकट की दारू मिलती थी एयर होस्टेज आती थी हमारी दारू लेके आ जाती थी जब मैं शराब पीता था मेरी बीवी बहुत मुझसे नाराज़ होती थी गुस्सा होती थी झगड़ा होता था मैं बचपन से मेहनत करके अपने आप में मैं खड़ा हूँ मेहनत करके कमा कमा के अपने बलबूते पर खड़ा हूँ मैं मेरे बेटे को ट्यूमर हो गया था गले पर अब मैंने उसका बहुत इलाज किया डॉक्टर के पास गया डॉक्टर ने कहा इसका ऑपरेशन करना पड़ेगा तो मैंने कहा का, कर दीजिए बोले आप बेफिक्र रहो एक पंद्रह मिनट में इसको ठीक कर दूंगा मैं मैं ऑपरेशन थिएटर में जाता हूं तो मेरे बेटा टेबल पे लेटा हुआ है और इतना बड़ा कट था उसका और मैंने कहा जी क्या बात है तो बोले ऑपरेशन नहीं कर पाएंगे क्योंकि ट्यूमर जो है वो निकाल नहीं सकते वो नसों में जकड़ा हुआ है नसों के बीच में जकड़ा हुआ है और वो एक भी नस बाय मिस्टेक कट जाए तो वो पैरालाइज हो जाएगा उसको लकवा हो सकता है एक साइड से पूरा बदन खराब हो जाएगा बोले क्या करने से बोले बंद कर दो ऑपरेशन तो फिर से स्टिच कर दिया उन्होंने ऑपरेशन नहीं हुआ अब वो जो ट्यूमर है इतना सा था वो इतना बड़ा हो गया दो साल में हमने होम्योपैथी आयुर्वेदिक बहुत सा इलाज किया कुछ नहीं वो ट्यूमर इतना बड़ा हो गया अब वो ना उससे ठीक हो रहा है आयुर्वेदिक से या होम्योपैथिक से और ऑपरेशन के लिए भी नहीं जा सकते हैं और एक कुंडली वाले ने तो कहा था कि 2002 तक ही आपका बच्चा है इसके बाद आपका बच्चा नहीं है एक बार हम हम लोग अमेरिका गए थे अमेरिका वगैरह घूम फिर के निकले अब एक संडे हम लोग चर्च में गए जो पास्टर की नज़र पड़ी मेरे बेटे के ट्यूमर पर तो मैंने कहा ये ट्यूमर है उन्होंने कहा इसको ले जाओ न्यूयॉर्क में एक हॉस्पिटल है स्लॉन कैटरिंग उसमें ले जाओ ये ठीक हो जाएगा इसको खुदा ठीक करेगा तुम खुदा के घर में हो ऑपरेशन कराना पड़ेगा और डॉक्टर ने कहा ऑपरेशन करे तो ये होगा लकवा मारेगा फलाना होगा उसकी आंखों की रोशनी जाएगी ये सब बातें थी तो मैंने कहा देखो 
डॉक्टर ने बोला ठीक है लेकिन गॉड पे विश्वास करना बहुत ज़रूरी है और जीसस हमारा जिंदा है मेरी बात में अगर वो जिंदा है तो आपसे बात करेंगे आप उनसे पहले पूछिए अगर वो खुद आपसे बात करते हैं खुद बोलते हैं कि ऑपरेशन करो तो ही मैं अपने बच्चे को अलाउ करूँगी और न मैं अपने बच्चे को ऑपरेशन के लिए मैं इजाज़त नहीं दूँगी मेरी बात ऐसे खड़ी थी मैं भी खड़ा था मैं तुरंत घुटने टेका और उधर ही प्रार्थना शुरू की मैंने कहा परमेश्वर यशु के नाम से मुझसे बात कर मुझे बता कि मैं ऑपरेशन के लिए जाऊँगी और मुझे आवाज़ आई जा बेटा जा ऑपरेशन कर डर मत मैं तेरे साथ हूँ ऑपरेशन के दिन तीन घंटे के बाद मेरा बेटा बाहर आया हम लोगों को डर था जैसे कि यहाँ उन्होंने कहा था कि पैरालाइज होगा आंखों की रोशनी कम होगी लेफ्ट हैंड बिल्कुल हंड्रेड परसेंट पैरालाइज होगा लेकिन मेरा बेटा तीन घंटे बाद जब बाहर आया अपने लेफ्ट हैंड से बोला डैडी आई एम एब्सोलूटली ऑल राइट बिल्कुल ठीक था साढ़े ग्यारह बजे वो बाहर आया और साढ़े बारह बजे वो वीडियो गेम खेल रहा है बिल्कुल उसको को कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं मैं बिल्कुल नरक में था गलतियों में था पाप में था मैंने कहा क्या आप मेरी प्रार्थना परमेश्वर सुनते हैं और इतना बड़ा चमत्कार हो सकता है जिस दिन मेरा बच्चा ठीक हुआ उसका ऑपरेशन बिल्कुल सही तरीके से हुआ को जब चंगाई मिली मेरी जिंदगी बदल गई मैंने सारी चीजें छोड़ दी शराब सिगरेट गंदी बातें बोलना किसी के बारे में गलत बोलना मैंने कहा उसको छोड़ दिया शराब में डेढ़ बोतल पीता था और चार पैकेट सिगरेट पीता था बहुत मुश्किल था मेरे लिए छोड़ना ये बारिश के मौसम में बहुत तकलीफ होती थी मुझे तलब आती थी लेकिन मैं प्रार्थना करता था कि परमेश्वर मुझे शक्ति दे यीशु मुझे ताकत दे जब परमेश्वर की रोशनी आती है तो एक ताकत आती है आपके अंदर और उस ताकत से आप इन चीजों को फॉलो कर सकते हैं इस मार्ग पर चल सकते हैं आर वर्ल्ड टूडे सो डेस्परेटली हंगर सो हो येट अनकाउंटेड पीपल हैव ऑलमोस्ट गिवन अप देयर इज डिस्पेयर एंड होपलेसनेस ऑन एवरी हैंड लेट अस बी अश्योर्ड दैट होप इज इन जीसस He will not leave us alone. He will not forget that we need him. That security brings us hope. And that hope is a precious gift given to you today by Jesus. We thank you all for being a participant of this exhibition. Have a wonderful day. Which are dated back 
nearly 75,000 years ago. Ancient Egypt, famous for the extravagant life of the pharaoh, is known for its rich design, artwork and opulence. The use of bracelets, necklaces, collars and more, all in gold, aligns with the extravagant life of the time. The ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans used gold as well as precious stones like emeralds, pearls. The Romans introduced the brooch as a functional accessory. Rings were also commonly worn accessory by men and women in ancient Rome. Spanning a legacy of 5,000 years, the jewelry of India is a striking expression of the country's aesthetic and cultural history. The story of India's fascination with jewelry begins 5,000 years ago in the Indus Valley. Beautifully designed and intricate jewelry pieces were also designed to adorn the idols of gods and goddesses. Slowly, such jewelry came to be used by the dancers. The gold jewelry designs of Tamil Nadu and Kerala draw their inspiration from nature and the Kundan and Meenakari styles of jewelry are inspired by the designs of the Mughal dynasty. Not only gold, there is also a vast variety of silver jewelry found all over India. The silver bead ornaments are especially popular in the states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Asmi's jewelry draws its inspiration from the local flora and fauna and Manikwe jewelry makers create jewelry with the help of shells, teeth, animal claws and precious and semi-precious stones. Cosmetics is derived from the Greek word cosmetikos meaning a sense of harmony and order. The history of cosmetics spans at least 7000 years and is present in almost every society. Now let us see how different countries used makeup. We get our first glimpse of cosmetics in ancient Egypt where makeup served as a marker of wealth. Cosmetics were also used in ancient Rome, although much of Roman literature suggests that it was frowned upon. Ancient Chinese used to create cosmetics by boiling and fermenting ingredients such as plants, animal fats and spices. In Japan, beauty has long been associated with light skin tone. In England, it was popular for women to dye their hair red or to wear egg whites on their face for a glazed look. The earliest records of cosmetic substances and their application dates back to 2500 and 1500 BCE to the Indus Valley Civilization. In today's world, beauty products are widely available from dedicated internet retailers and major departmental stores. Gender equality movements progress, the line between who can and who can't wear makeup is becoming even more blurred, or should we say blended. Now more than ever, makeup is seen as a tool of self-expression, whosoever that self may be. Thank you. Sari is the world's oldest and perhaps the only surviving unstitched garment from the past. The word sari means a strip of cloth in Sanskrit. But for the Indian women who have been wrapping themselves in cotton, silk and linen for a millennia, it means more than just swaths of clothes. They are symbols of national pride, ambassadors for traditional design and craftsmanship. Sari might be a fashionable garment today, but it started from being a humble drink used by women thousands of years ago. Today, we are going to see the history of Sari, the Nine Yard Wonder. 
the origin of a saree the origin of a drape or a garment similar to that of a saree goes back to the indus valley civilization which came into being during 2800 bc and 1800 bc in northwest india some historians go on to say that the art of cotton and weaving it into a fabric came in india from the mesopotamian civilization the persians and the greeks the greeks wore a belt like cloth around the waist and the persians wore clothes held together at the shoulders and belted at the waist these styles fascinated the indian women and they started wearing the belt around the waist and blended the design the mughal period during the mughal reign there was another major change in the indian sarees they perfected the art of stitching and had a great fascination with silk clothes the modern style of draping the sarees originated in this period this is the style which made the indian women look graceful there existed more than 500 national dyes during this period in the post mughal period came the new art of synthetic dyeing and printing which gave the indian sarees a new look so over the years of indian history this dress had undergone variations in colors designs and styles of draping it around the body today it is not only an attire for rituals or festivals but also an attire for fashion and an element of fashionable creativity thank you spices a spice is a seed fruit root bark or other plant substance primarily used for flavoring or coloring food india is a land of spices pepper turmeric cardamom cinnamon and cumin are some examples of indian spices the history of indian spices is almost as old as the human civilization of spices the portuguese navigator vasco da gama sailed to india to control the spice trade routes of india the spice trade developed throughout the indian subcontinent with cardamom and black pepper so that is why black pepper is considered as the king of spices and cardamom is considered as the queen of spices as india produces a variety of spices so that is why it is known as the spice bowl of the world thank you hello friends today we are going to see history of pickle in india but before that let us see some amazing facts did you know november 14th is the national pickles day The famous Egyptian queen Cleopatra claimed pickles made her beautiful. Pickling vegetables not only improves their flavor, it can also make them more nutritious and easier to digest. cacao plant was discovered in mesoamerica 
Aztecs and Mayans regarded Joktil as food of the gods. They had developed a detailed process of extracting the foamy beverage. The fruity drink was enjoyed by the upper class. The beans were used as currency. Spanish explorer Hermann Cortes received cacao beans instead of gold. The Spanish developed their own way of drinking hot chocolate by adding sugar or honey. After Spain, France, Britain and whole Europe went cuckoo for coca, With the invention of chocolate dress and efficient technology, it assumed a solid form. Companies such as Fryer, Lindt, Hershey's, Cadbury, Magnum and Nutella developed numerous varieties of chocolate. Chocolate is innovating ever since. Hello everyone, have you ever seen this? Oh, it is called Papad, an Indian appetizer. I travel a lot of places for different types of food. Today, I am going to share with all of you the colourful past of Papad. The word Papadam in Malayalam, Tamil and Sanskrit is the root word of Papad. Papad has become an integral part of Indian cuisine. Sin as we all know, is an arid desert in southeast Pakistan. It has deep prehistoric roots and first village settlement dates around 7000 BC. After a partition in 1947, the Hindu Sindhis who had lost all their wealth and properties after migrating in India in 1947 tuned into upper making business to re-establish their economic base. The women who were not much affluent started making papad. Geographically also, papad has a unique place as it replenishes salt and mineral lost during perspiration in the heat and dry climate of Sindh. Papad is not just a simple snack or appetizer, rather join the whole of Indian community through a different varieties. Thank you. My day is just incomplete without tea. I'm so glad that someone invented tea. Okay, but do you know that this beverage you drink in the morning has a very unique history? What? Tea has a history? Mm -hmm, it does. I really want to know. Have you ever wondered about how a plant from far away China became the nation's favorite drink? Let's see how. According to the legend, tea was invented just by an accident. Long ago in the country of China, well, almost 5,000 years ago, Emperor Shenong was drinking a bowl of just boiled water. The tree was a Camellia sinensis and the resulting drink was what we now call tea. As per the history of tea drinking in India, local people used to brew and drink tea using the leaves of the wild native tea plants. The commercial production of tea in India was started by the British East India Company. They smuggled tea trees and experienced tea workers from China to India. Ironically, the native plants flourished while the smuggled Chinese seedlings struggled to survive and it was decided to make subsequent plantings with the native tea bush itself. And today, tea is the second most consumed beverage around the globe after water. Sports in India refer to a large variety of games played in India, ranging from tribal games to more mainstream sports, 
such as field hockey, kabaddi, cricket, badminton, and football. India has a sports history going back a thousand years from the time of Indus Valley Civilization. Do you know the world's oldest stadium with terrain stands was constructed at Dholavira, Gujarat in the 3rd millennium BCE. Many pieces of evidence suggest that the people played an early form of chess and invented dice and water games with hunting and boxing etc. The importance of sports was also evident in the Vedic era. The board game today called Snakes and Ladders originated in ancient India where it was known by the name Mokshpat or Mokshpatam. Just like Snakes and Ladders, Chauka Bhara originated in ancient India. It is a precursor to the Ludo game and it was designed to enhance mathematical skills of young children. The sport of wrestling was also popular in ancient India and it was called Mal Yud. Chess was known as Chaturanga in ancient days and it was invented by the Gupta dynasty. This immensely popular game has undergone various changes from Chaturanga to Shatranj to finally modern day chess. The famous sport of Kabaddi was also invented in ancient India. The modern game of badminton has developed from an old children's game known in England as Battledore and Shuttlecock, a game popular in ancient India. The Battledore was a paddle and the Shuttlecock was a small feathered cock, now usually called a bird. Although it had its origin in England, it is in India that the modern form of badminton was involved. The game got its modern form in the garrison city of Pune in the 1860s. In fact, it was properly known as Pune itself when it was played by the Britishers.
हाथ दिया आप सभी का हिंदी संस्कृत प्रदर्शनी में स्वागत है अधरों पर मधुर मुस्कान सी माथे पर चमकती बिंदी है भाषाओं में जो रानी सी वह अपनी श्रेष्ठ हिंदी है सही कहा दिया जी पता है हिंदी क्यों खास है क्योंकि इसमें जज्बात और एहसास है यह वर्ष भी गत वर्ष की भांति कितने स्नेह एवं स्वजनों को हमसे दूर ले गया है पिछले वर्ष प्रिय जोनाथन सर के दुख से अभी हम पूरी तरह उबर भी ना पाए थे कि इस वर्ष दो मई पर हमारी जो क्षति हुई उसकी आजीवन पूर्ति नहीं हो सकती बिल्कुल हम सब के प्रिय व आदर्श इस विद्यालय के संस्थापक व प्रधानाचार्य पूजनीय डॉक्टर वीके विलियम जी की दिव्यात्मा प्रभु से मिलने स्वर्ग प्रस्थान कर गई प्रिय सर आपने जो सिद्धांत व आदर्श हमें सिखाए हैं उनका हम जीवन पर्यंत पालन करेंगे हमारी प्रथम प्रस्तुति आदरणीय सर द्वारा दिए गए इस वर्ष के विषय अर्थात थीम पर आधारित संस्कृत में एक प्रार्थना गीत है जो श्री विलियम सर को समर्पित श्रीमान ब्रिजेश जी की रचना है जिसकी संगीत में लयबद्ध प्रस्तुति कक्षा दसवीं डी की छात्राओं द्वारा की जा रही है
करो मुझसे पहचान जानो मेरा क्या है नाम संज्ञा का लेता स्थान इनका उनका तुम्हारा हमारा सबका नाम मैं ही कहलाऊ सर्वनाम भाषा को रोचक बनाऊ सबके मन को मैं ही भाऊ छोटा नीला पीला दाए बाए जहा भी जाए मुझे ही बाए मेरे बिना कुछ कहा न जाए मैं ही तो विशेषता बताऊ इसीलिए विशेषण कहलाऊ मेरी बात सभी को मान कैसा कैसी कितना कितनी वे मेरे बताना नहीं आसान खेलो कूदो या पढ़ो लिखो काम सभी से मैं करवाती इसलिए क्रिया कहलाती सिरता को भंग करके जीवन में हो रंग भर जाती सबको क्रियाशील बनाती जल्दी जल्दी धीरे धीरे कल पर सोया ऊपर नीचे रीति स्थान काल और परिमाण सबसे कराती हूँ जान पहचान मैं ही क्रिया की विशेषता बताती इसलिए क्रिया विशेषण कहलाती मैं ही काम करने का तरीका बताती इसी से मुझको मिलती खिलाती समझ गया, समझ गया। 
तो मैं कब मैं हराऊंगा तोड़ मोड़ कर बोला करो ये भी कोई इंसान है या जानवर जिनके हाथ या मैं होंगे तुम्हारा सर तो ऐसे का वैसा है उस पर आसमान का हट गया है बेतु की बातें तो फिर तुमसे करना सीखे जिसने सिर खाली करवाना हो तुम्हारे संग बैठे तुम्हारी बेतु की बातें सुनकर तो मैं परेशान हो गई मानो मेरी तो लुटिया ही डूब गई <laughs> तो चलो फिर बजाते हैं ताली क्योंकि तुमने मुहावरो लुकोकती हो कि पोटली है निकाली मेरी अपल पर पत्थर बड़े हैं ये है मत समझो जब पोटली में सिर्फ दे ही दिया तो मुँह से क्यों डरू मैं तुम्हारा लोहा तब मान जाऊंगी ये मुहावरे या कहावत जब इसका उत्तर पाऊंगी मेरी अकल पर ताला तो नहीं लगाए जो इतनी सी बात भी ना समझ पाऊंगा किसी की आम जीवन की घटना कहानी के आधार पर कही गई बातें होती है कहावत ये है तुम्हें समझा कर ही जाऊंगा नहीं तो चुल्लू भर पानी में डूब जाऊंगा लोहा मानना मुहावरा है सो तुमसे अपना लोहा मनवा कर ही जाऊंगा बिल्कुल ठीक बिल्कुल ठीक लोग मान गए तुम्हारा लोहा पर तुम मेरा लोहा ही क्यों मानी मेरा सोना मेरी चांदी मेरा तांबा क्यों नहीं मानी सोना चांदी और तांबा की अपेक्षा लोहा का मूल्यमान है समझ गया समझ गया मुझे नीचे दिखाने के तुम्हारी यह एक चाल है <coughs> लो भाई अब डॉक्टर बुलाओ या हकीम कड़ा ही पिलाती हूँ खूब कड़वा जल्दी असर करेगा तुम भी न्या बात को समझ ना पाओगे किसी का लोहा मान जाना यानी किसी से हार मान लेना खुद ही उत्तर बताकर भूल जाते हो कितना भी समझा लो पर बात पलने नहीं पड़ती चिकने घड़े हो तो चिकने ये है बात खड़ी है मैं पहाड़ा बनाने चाहती हूँ बाप रे बाप बद तो लानी तो सचमुच में निकल पड़ी मैंने तो यूं ही खासने का बहाना बनाया था पीनी थी चाय और अब पीना पड़ेगा कड़वा काड़ा भाई लेने के देने पड़ गए लेने के देने लेने के देने यानी मुहावरों से बात बन सकती है अरे ओ बत्तो रानी ओ बत्तो रानी आई रुको आई मैं ठीक हूँ मुझे कुछ नहीं हुआ ना कोई पड़े दौरा ना कोई बीमारी मैं जीता और तुम हारी नहीं 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 तुम जीती और मैं हारा अगली बार तो खूब कड़वा काड़ा पिला कर ही रहूंगी और फिर समझाऊंगी उस कहावत का अर्थ एक तो करेला उस पर से नीम चढ़ा धन्यवाद अब हम अपनी प्रदर्शनी के अंतिम चरण पर आ गए हैं अपने वीर सैनिकों को श्रद्धा सुमन अर्पित करते हुए तथा देश के पिछहत्तरवे स्वतंत्रता दिवस की हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं देते हुए हम आप सभी से विदा लेते हैं और पुनः मिलेंगे आने वाले वर्ष में धन्यवाद